Thank you for joining us once again, everyone. I'm Ron Corning for the second day. Forward DFW together with the Dallas Morning News is joining you to bring you up to date on the coronavirus pandemic, which has swept the globe and is now washing across the United States with uncertainty. We want to bring you up to date on the very latest that we've learned as of a briefing this afternoon from the White House. Testing numbers are up. The percentage of those who are testing positive is increasing on a daily basis as more tests roll out. Medical experts had warned us of that possibility. As a result, they have brought hospital ships into the harbors of Manhattan, one of the most densely populated cities in the United States, for fear that those who need treatment perhaps will overwhelm hospitals there. So again, signaling that this could continue, this crisis, continue to get worse and have an impact on our economy. The markets again reflecting that with another down day on Wall Street uh, that halted trading which has been triggered several times over the last two weeks was triggered yet again as the markets began to fall. And that leads us to our show today as we take a closer look at the economic slowdown, how it's impacting people here in Dallas. Here's what we're going to run down today. We have that. We also are going to be talking about will delivery deliver? We're talking about the hospitality industry, specifically restaurants, as they try to pivot to save their businesses and to save their employees' jobs. Will delivery and pickup service help them stay afloat during a difficult time? And finally, bank on this. The North Texas Food Bank taking an extraordinary step to try and help people in crisis. We are going to talk to them live here as well. We're going to start by a restaurant in the Bishop Arts neighborhood of Dallas. It's a social center, Bishop Arts, a conglomerate of restaurants and bars and shopping. Here is a post from Odd Fellows. They've always had takeout windows, and those takeout windows now are their only options for people to be able to pick up food. We're going to talk to the owner, Amy Wallace Cowan, in just a moment. And to Fort Worth and Rar and Sons Brewing Company, they have curbside pickup, and if you ever needed a drink, it's probably now. You can pick it up there curbside. That's how they're trying to keep business alive, not for their own bottom line as much as for their employees. Many of them, many of these small business owners stressing to all of us that they, they really feel for their employees who depend on those jobs and depend on our business. And so how can we navigate this to help them? We're going to be joined, we hope, by Fritz Rahr via Zoom coming up here in just a little bit because Rather than have guests here in studio who were available, we are practicing social distancing, which we know is among a number of things that we all have to do to make sure that we don't spread this very contagious disease, the coronavirus. So, Amy Wallace Cowan, joining me right now from Odd Fellows, some six feet away, here to my left. Nice to see you, Amy. You're wearing the headset, so in the event we get Fritz, we can talk about this and you can hear what he has to say. Sure. You have closed essentially for business with the exception of one employee. Yes. We officially laid all of our employees off at Oddfellows and at Revelers Hall on Monday night mm. so that we could transition them as quickly as possible to unemployment benefits offered by the state. Um, if you look at the margins of any restaurant, and Sarah Blaskovich has a piece she just launched about 30 minutes ago on the Dallas Morning News. She talks about how long can the average restaurant survive without its normal volume and the candid answer is probably three days. Really? Mm -hmm. Super short. I, I was going to say, among among the restaurants in Dallas, there are some 13,500 restaurants, I believe, um, at last count. Yes. Um, serving how many people generally on a daily basis? Um, I mean, it depends on, obviously, what you do and, and the market of dining that you're in. Right. Um, Hundreds of thousands. Oddfellas being fast casual and and. and pretty approachable price point um, on an average Saturday we'll do you know five to seven hundred covers mm. uh, Sunday we'll do 500 covers um, this past weekend obviously we did not make those numbers no so I was gonna say you're you're among one of the busiest of restaurants in busy. that area I've waited for brunch in line that. yes for Hope up to an hour and it's worth the wait but I know you begin to worry first about your employees and how they'll get by Very much. And we're going to talk about some of the steps being taken. Um, but secondly, some of the mechanics and difficulties of transitioning or pivoting to pickup or delivery only. It's not as easy as some people think. From what I've read, the Los Angeles Times, for example, saying that if you rely on Uber Eats or Favor or one of those delivery services, they can take up to 30% mm -hmm. of, of, of what you make. Some of them have taken those fees away, and yet it's still not easy 
to sign up if you're not already signed up. Right. We uh, were initial members of Uber Eats and Caviar back in the day, and we have mm. since dropped those services because of the high margin that they do take from you. So we are not on those services going into this crisis. We um, do offer pickup, of course, at our window. We do takeout, but that is less than 1% of our typical sales. Yeah, most of the business, I mean, we know this too, comes from the bar. There's a, there's a larger profit margin at the bar than there is on the food itself. Right, correct. Um, also, I'm wondering when it comes to some of these restaurants, because I talked to a waiter who was hoping at a local sushi restaurant that he would pivot, change jobs from waiting tables to delivering. Uh -huh. There are insurance issues possibly with restaurant owners to be able to put their employees in their personal vehicles for the sake of their business. So how do you navigate that in a short order of time before business falls off? It has never been more important to have an excellent insurance agent I bet. who can guide you through what your policy already covers and what available options there are for you. Um, we're thankful that we have those options. We have not uh, gone to delivery yet because we're still just figuring out who will come work what we can afford to pay them without right. going into a hole that we can't climb out of. So how many employees total do you have? Did you have before we, this happened? We had about 50 employees. My gosh. Mm -hmm. So 49 people are unemployed. 49 people are From unemployed. one restaurant. Well, so we own Revelers well, Hall. Well, you own two. You own those, two. But Revelers Hall staff is about five. So. Right. So the majority of those unemployed are coming from one restaurant. Correct. And because we're not they, large. And you're not a large restaurant. So right. now take that number times it by the number of restaurants, 13, just that 13,500. And we're looking at just one industry That's correct. and a high unemployment rate. And I want to make something clear here because somebody yesterday took exception to the fact that I'd mentioned restaurant workers as among those who were suffering in this economic slowdown. I wasn't meaning to say that it's the only industry affected, but I think the restaurant industry is emblematic of what everyone is going through. And Restaurants are social gathering places. We rely on them for those of us who might not be able to cook or have in grocery shop. We rely on them. Um, we find enjoyment in them. A lot of social networking happens in restaurants. And I think we're going to begin to learn just how much a part of the social fabric of our lives you are and what a cornerstone of the economy the restaurant industry is, among other industries. But we're trying to find something that's relatable. And all of us know somebody who works in the restaurant industry. We want to go to Fritz Rahr with Rahr and Sons Brewing Company in Fort Worth, a local small brewer, relatively small. And Fritz, I know you're joining us here by Zoom, so you can keep your distance there and you can continue to run your business. Um, give me some sense so far how you're affected by this. Well, this is a really, really tough situation. We have, you know, about 50 employees trying to keep roofs over our roofs over their their heads and what we've done today is we've been forced to not host any of our major tours that we do twice a week where we get anywhere from 500 to 600 people in the door but what we're doing now is just opening up for beer to go so mm -hmm. for example today from two until seven o'clock tonight we will be selling beer at our front dock door to the general public uh, up to one case per person. We've had to get really creative in how bringing revenue. Overnight, we lost, you know, approximately 40, 45% of our business because that portion of the business would be the bars and restaurants. And those seem to be closing down and shutting, shutting their doors for the meantime. So we have to rely on packaged product going out to liquor stores and grocery stores. Hopefully, they will stay open and provide those services to the community. So in the meantime, we have to get creative and fun and drive people to the brewery, and hopefully they buy copious amounts of beer from us through our Beer to Go program. Well, that's the thing, and we're talking about this here when you add up the numbers. I mean, from an economic standpoint, the, the numbers just – there's nothing you can do to equal the loss because – it's still just a small portion of your business. You rely on people who visit you and tour in groups. That can't happen. You rely on shipping out product to bars that are packed with people. Those bars are closed. And so if you're continuing to stay in business, you're operating with smaller intake and unable then to afford probably to keep your staff as well. Are you concerned that you may end up as Amy has had to do and, and, and you lay off staff? Well, our number one goal here at the brewery is the, the safety and protection and well-being of our employees. So we're going to do everything that we can possibly do to skinny up the operations as much as possible to keep as much of the staff 
um, on full time as, as possible. Now, with that being said, mm -hmm. if this thing really stretches out over a long period of time, we'll probably have to start making some hard decisions and start trimming up hours and cutting back hours for hourly workers. But for right now, we really want to stay focused on keeping everybody as long as we possibly can and just cutting corners everywhere else that, that we can. Yeah. And hopefully this will blow over here in a couple, two, three, four weeks. And, you know, hopefully in two months, three months, we can look back and kind of go, Corona, Corona what? And I hope. that's what we're going we hope it's just a beer. Um, l l let me ask you this. Um, has this taught you anything? I know it's, it's, it's hit us all like a tidal wave in a sense with little warning. Uh, but have you begun to look at this and think to yourself, okay, what's a future contingency plan for anything that's at all like this? Well, you know, that's really tough in our business because we're a service industry we sell beer to the general public through bars, restaurants, liquor stores, grocery stores, and things like that. So we're kind of at the whim of what happens in the general market. Mm -hmm. The one bright side that I can say is that even though we've lost a majority of our draft business, which would be the bars and restaurants, we have seen an uptick in packaged products going out to liquor stores and grocery stores mm -hmm. because people aren't going out to the bars and restaurants. They're going to the grocery stores and stocking up. Uh, we've seen a tremendous increase in just the beer to go program here at the brewery. So our focus right now is not package real draft um, salute, you know, opportunities that we have, but just everything that we can to pack product. And what I mean by package, you know, our cans and, and cases, four packs, six by you know, liquor stores. All right, Fritz, uh, thank you for joining us. I know the technology sometimes is a little bit interruptive, but we got the job done. We heard from Fritz. We get a real sense of how he's adjusting to this sudden change. And we were talking about that too, Amy, how sudden this was. I mean, you saw news of restaurants closing in places like Washington where it seemed like, okay, there's the epicenter of this. There's no way we'll be impacted in this way. And it seemed like almost overnight in a 48-hour period, we were right where they are and were and still are. Correct. And this is the uh, spring break. Dallas ISD is on spring break, which right. is kind of the cornerstone for when everybody else will take theirs. So on that note, we should say this. Amy, in preparation, not for this, but for spring break, you stockpiled restaurant goods and foods that you know are some are perishable, some are not. And you've turned your grocery store in par. This is how you've, I guess, diversified in a difficult situation. Yeah. But you're accomplishing two things. You're selling your goods to the public at a fair market value. Correct. And so people who have experienced a run on grocery stores and are without certain things, they can come to you. Yes. So we uh, obviously, because it's spring break, we had stocked up. We were prepared for, for big booming business and uh, that will not be happening now. So we have worked with Better Block, which is a nonprofit uh, oriented in our neighborhood. They have these uh, darling little market stalls. So we've <laughs> set them up out front with fresh fruits and vegetables, tomatoes, So you're collaborating. Bread. Do you feel yourselves collaborating with your neighbors in ways you hadn't before? Of course, yes. Yeah. And hopefully others will, will follow suit. If there's no meat in the grocery store, I guarantee you your local restaurant's sitting on a whole lot of it. And that's they can't a really, afford to lose really, it. That's a really good so. point. All right, Melissa, so far, um, before we take a quick break here, what are you seeing on Facebook? What are people saying about what they're experiencing? how they're just so grateful for all of this information and they're saying what about concert venues what about and the, the people who work the doors and the staff the ushers the, the ticket ushers. takers i mean it's on and on but dang what about then we're getting into the homeless and feeding you know the needy but people are just so grateful for the local restaurants and they want to support their neighbors and i'm seeing this number i'm seeing this number just your number amy i'm thinking 44 people in one restaurant five in another 49 total laid off we hope only temporarily that number times the number of restaurants just locally then in the state then in the country mm -hmm. that's one industry so we're trying to really get a handle on the scope of this economically and how it will affect people personally in terms of how they're able to get by paycheck to paycheck. And as we leave you here for just a moment, we want to show you if you want to learn more about Odd Fellows, where they're located, if you need groceries, you can go to that restaurant. Uh, there's the information, oddfellowsdallas.com. Their menus there as well. If you need takeout at the window, we know that Amy's working on a very short staff to try and meet 
needs as best she can there in the Bishop Arts neighborhood. Also, Revelers is another one of her businesses. But as she said, Revelers Hall for the moment is shuttered. shut down. It is shuttered. And that's going to be a story, unfortunately, that we hear all too many times about these restaurants and businesses simply not being able to stay in business at any level. And RAR and Sons Brewing in Fort Worth, they are on South Main Street, part of an area of Fort Worth that's been undergoing a real renaissance. And the RAR Brewing Company has been a part of that. You heard Fritz RAR say he's doing what he can to cut costs where he can, cut corners and keep his people employed. And if you want beer, buy local, go curbside, pick it up there. And in terms of people in need, in need of food, in need of volunteerism, we have ways for you to help. Take a listen. Volunteer, make a positive impact, move forward together. Volunteering connects you with the community to serve and impact others for the good. Want to help but don't know where to start? We have your connection to make a difference. Go to FWD dfw.com forward slash volunteer and on all social media use the hashtag what moves you so we've been talking about the economic slowdown that has come about as a result of coronavirus covid19 and this pandemic which has swept across the country is sweeping across the country and closing down industry and business we talked about restaurants which for so many people the higher end restaurants might be a luxury but for others having a meal and having food is not a luxury. It is a necessity that they can't afford. And the North Texas Food Bank has been a part of this community since 1982. They served up last year, get this, 28 million pounds of food. That's 77 million meals. And that still does not meet the need of what people in DFW um, uh, have when it comes to being food insecure. Uh, going hungry is one part of it. Being food insecure means that you may have some, but not enough food. You don't know how long it will last, and you need to reach out to the North Texas Food Bank for help. But in an interesting move, an extraordinary move, really, the North Texas Food Bank has married with the hospitality industry to try to help employees like Amy Wallace Cowens from Odd Fellows meet their needs. And she's going to tell us how she's doing that. Tricia Cunningham is going to tell us. She's from the North Texas Food Bank, also joining us via Zoom right now. And Tricia, thank you for being here. I don't want to steal your thunder. This is already made news, but explain to us what you're doing to help the hospitality industry and those workers who, um, like Amy's employees, are out of a job. Well, Ron, thank you so much for having me on here today. Uh, yes, you know, we were in a bit of a dilemma uh, last week. We saw what was happening out in the community. We needed to be able to shift our distribution model from where we would take pallets and pallets of food out to our 200 plus partner agencies, and then they would distribute it in a grocery style model um, to a way that was gonna be safer, safer for our partner agencies and safer for those that were coming and picking up. So we were going to have to have a whole lot more volunteers, but we were seeing volunteer shifts cancel. And so my number one need last week was a steady supply of volunteers out in the community. So, you know, you throw a challenge out there. I let my board know this is what the, the challenge was for us. And uh, over the weekend, we were able to bring together some partners and was able to put together a really win-win solution that will also benefit these restaurant workers who are going to be out of work. And in particular, all the hospitality industries. So we have, a partnership with Shift Smart, which is a organization that has a technology platform that can help workers find access to jobs. And then with the Community Foundation of Texas, who has put in place a fund, and we've had donors already contribute to a fund called um, Gift Shift for North Texas. And um, basically they're targeting these hospitality workers and they're sending them information through their Shift Smart app where people can sign up and they will be coming to the to the food bank to be able to volunteer. We're starting the shifts uh, that we're doing a couple of pilot shifts on this week and a couple of evenings. And then starting next week, instead of traditional volunteers that we've typically had, which we have about 41,000 a year, we are shifting to the Shift Smart workers. 
So Shift Smart is taking care of all the payment. They're taking care of recruiting the workers. They're going to be doing all the screening and training, and they're going to show up at our facilities where we need them in order to be able to help us to get more than 60,000 boxes of family meal boxes so that we can make sure that we can continue to get food out to people. So essentially what, what you're saying here is the headline is, is that hospitality workers can qualify for paid jobs to help you meet the needs of families and individuals across North Texas who don't have food. Absolutely, Ron. So, you know, this is a situation where, you know, we're seeing these people that are out of work, they want to work, they need some income. We have a great need as well to be able to make sure that we can get this food out. And so it's a win-win. We're getting the volunteers that we need Shift Smart is providing the technology to be able to source the workers primarily from the hospitality industry. And then the Communities Foundation, the donors in the community have really stepped up to help pay for these people. Well, because if you're if you're weighed down by the administrative part of trying to hire and recruit workers, then that takes your eye off your own focus, and that is to feed families in need. So this is really a collaborative effort. And is there part of this? I know we're we feel like we're in a free fall every day because something else changes. And I it's sort of again the markets are symbolic of how we feel. It's in a free fall. We feel like our lives are in a free fall. What does the future hold? When you see this sort of collaboration behind the scenes that materializes into real jobs for people in North Texas, knowing that you're in this business of helping others, how does that make you feel? You know, I always know that our North Texas community is very generous and they're a very innovative community as well. Mm -hmm. And just to see this come to fruition, I believe it's, it's, amazing. You know, people have stepped up. When people have needs, our community will step up to help meet those needs. And that's what we're seeing right now as well. And so Gillian, Gillian Breidenbach is here. She's with the Dallas Morning News and uh, Forward DFW. And Gillian, I know you've had a partnership uh, the Dallas Morning News has with the North Texas Food Bank for... 15 years. 15 years now. News charities. So, so when you see, again, your goal in coming to work for the Dallas Morning News and Forward DFW was to really promote and build on a spirit of philanthropy and giving and volunteerism. Did you ever imagine, I haven't asked you this question, did you ever imagine that it would come to a head in this sort of way that you would really be put into practice during such a time of, of crisis? There's no other way to describe it. Certainly we weren't prepared for this, uh, knowing that it was coming, but it was inevitable that we would be called to, to step up and, and use our platform through Ford DFW and the Dallas Morning News to really help our community. And at this point, with folks like Trisha Cunningham and the North Texas Food Bank taking charge and leading from the front, we couldn't ask for better partners in the Dallas Morning News Charities. So we want people to know how they can continue to learn more about this if they go to fwddfw.com. You have a link there now to the website for North Texas Food Bank and also Shift Smart so volunteers can get paid jobs from the hospitality industry. Those who are out of work can get jobs there. Absolutely. We, we are encouraging folks to donate money and volunteer their time. We've got some of that on, on display right now. Everybody's in need. Everybody can help. Please go visit these nonprofit agencies that are in desperate need right now. We want to make sure that the restaurant industry and all of our other industries and local economy stay mm. strong as we weather this very difficult moment in time. Yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're, we're sort of keeping a balance sheet. We're hoping that X number of employees from this industry can be employed over here. We're hoping that Amazon ramping up for delivery and that 100,000 employees at uh, shipping centers around the country will account for some people who are out of work for a certain period of time. I mean, you just hope that this doesn't go on too long and that you continue to stay informed and on top of it with what we're doing here and also with what the Dallas Morning News has done. They've taken steps to make sure that you are informed. We want to tell you more about that. We'll be back here in just a moment to wrap up our conversation with all of our folks here. Thanks to Forward DFW and Baylor Scott and White Health, the Dallas Morning News is providing public health coverage of coronavirus free of charge. Go to DallasNews.com. All right, we are back another day, another conversation about how we are weathering this um, coronavirus 
pandemic that changes re really hour by hour. At the top of the show, we told you about some of the new information that was released uh, at a White House briefing not too long ago about the number of people who have tested positive, steps being taken to make sure that we have enough healthcare workers, we have enough hospital beds and so forth. Should people become more ill than we expect? Also, there was some information that younger people may be more susceptible to this than we thought. And then a deeper dive into the restaurant hospitality industry, how they are navigating and trying to change their business business model really on a dime, having never experienced this before. Um, and that's the kind of thing that businesses all over the country are trying to do, not just the restaurant industry. But we brought that up today because we hope that it would be something we could all relate to in some way. And an important point here that Amy Wallace Cowan made, and that was if you have a downsizing in your business because the street in front of Oddfellows is being torn up and your business has slowed and you're trying to account for it, but it's not working and you lay off three workers, there may be a hundred other waiter jobs for them to take. Yes. Every restaurant is closing. Every restaurant is downsizing. Yes. The other Either side or. of that coin is if they were tearing up the street in front of us, our business interruption insurance would probably kick in uh, and we could stem some of the bleeding. You don't have that. We have, you have a good insurance, the insurance agent. policy, but it doesn't cover virus. So many, many of us have And this is policy. that literally in the fine print? It is literally in the fine print. So somebody was thinking at some point, I mean, I suppose we were thinking conventionally if there were some horrible flu season, it's not covered for that, but we don't think about the wide sweeping Correct. ramifications of, Correct. of a pandemic. And Gillian, I know this is one of the busiest times for you. You've been working at the Dallas Morning News and with Forward DFW to try and inform people. In addition to what we're doing here, the paper has brought down that firewall so people can get all the information they need and lots of Facebook Live information with experts on the medical side of this, which you know is changing too, as we said, um, so rapidly. Everything is changing, and we're in unprecedented waters right now, and I think it's really important that we are able to get news and information out there that's credible and honest, and we really want to make sure that we are, are being strong partners in the community. Baylor, Scott, and White Health is the reason we're able to provide the, our coronavirus for free, uh, and we've got amazing partners in Forward DFW that care so much about this community, and one thing that we all know about North Texas, when we're in, we're in trouble and there's a crisis, we certainly rally around each other and, and work quickly to get things back to normal. Yeah, and I'll just make a suggestion. There are people, and I've had friends who've contacted me today, that there have been layoffs at their companies, and they're not in a position where, in a short amount of time, they can really shift their skill set and get another job. They're hoping their job will be back on track in, in three or four weeks. And so we've had conversations about, rather than be idle and be at home, find ways maybe to volunteer. What I didn't cover with Trisha, Trisha, are you still with us? She's still with us? I'm here. Trisha, just one quick question before we go, because I know this is going to come up if it hasn't already on Facebook Live. I'm not multitasking, so I'm not reading comments here. But uh, as volunteers come into the food bank, it's a very intimate environment. We saw that video. People work closely together. Clearly, with social distancing and sanitization and so forth, that model's changing a bit for you. Can you just give us a quick rundown? Sure, Ron. Uh, yes, we've absolutely changed the way that we're intaking volunteers. Whenever people come in, they have to go through the same screening questionnaires as uh, the CDC has recommended as far as understanding, you know, are they ill? Do they have, have they traveled somewhere that could put them at exposure? Uh, and if they are, then they need to go home. They don't need to come and volunteer with us. Even these that are coming through Shift Smart, they will have that same screening. When they get in, we would normally have a large sort of volunteer orientation. We're, we're spreading that out. We're taking them onto the floor, onto the lines. They're being separated by the lines and they'll get their orientation there of what they need to do. Uh, and then on the lines themselves, uh, they, well, and even before they can go in, they have to wash their hands. Uh, appropriately before and during their break and after their shift, they have to wash their hands. And then whenever they actually get on the lines, we're trying to make sure that we can distribute them in a way that they're not working elbow to elbow next to each other. Mm -hmm. We're we're putting our shifts and our lines together so that they have adequate spacing there. So it'll probably be, you know, people of maybe up to 15 people working on a line, but there's going to be different jobs so that they'll be able to be spread out. Yeah, we know from what Gillian has told us that Volunteer organizations are taking all the steps they need to take to make sure if they bring people together for a cause that all of those guidelines um, are followed. We know also that as people might be laid off temporarily, might lose their jobs, there are more food insecure people who will rely on the food bank and so they'll need even more help, more volunteers and we're going to keep on, uh, uh, on track with that. Tricia, with your help, thank you for joining us. Amy, thank you. Best of luck with everything. 
Um, Shining a light on our industry. Well, you're welcome. And I hope that that. the next time we talk to you that all of our lives are back to the kind of normal um, that, uh, that, that we all are missing in such a short order here. And thank you, Gillian and DFW. Thanks, Ron. Forward Just, DFW. If anybody can help, please donate money, but donate your time. Mm-hmm. We will make it through this crisis. Yes, indeed we will. And you are a network that can help people make sure the dollars go to the right places. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for logging on to Facebook. Share it with your friends. Any questions, concerns, we will answer them for you right here. And we appreciate your time. We'll see you next time, everybody. Special thanks to Forward DFW's founding and supporting partners for making this coverage possible. Forward DFW was created in partnership with the Dallas Morning News. The goal? To connect companies, causes, and the community and face issues that impact the economy and wellness of North Texas.